Leonard, the concept of information is having more and more importance in understanding the structure of the universe in a very fundamental way. How can black holes, these incredible areas of infinite density and curvature, how can they help us understand what information is in the universe? Well, let's first uh, say what information means in a very, very quick and simple way. The universe is a message. Think of the universe as a huge message. All the information in the universe is telling us something. What's the simplest way to describe a message? With dots and dashes in Morse code, dot, dot, dash, dot, dot, dash. To a mathematician, that's the simplest way to describe a message as a bunch of dots and dashes. That's reducing the message to information in the simplest possible sense of bits, bits of information. Dot, dash, dot, dash. Zeros and ones. Zeros and ones, binary code, yeah. whatever you like, dots and dashes. How many dots and dashes or how much information can the universe hold? That's an interesting question. Can it hold uh, a zillion, zillion dots <laughs> and dashes or a zillion, 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 zillion or whatever? The usual assumption has always been that the amount of information, the number of dots and dashes, the maximum amount of information in the universe is proportional to its volume. Of course it is. You can put dots and dashes and fill up the universe with dots and dashes. How many can you put in? Proportional to the volume of the universe. Black holes is teaching us that that's not the right answer. In particular, the puzzles about the horizons of black holes. When you throw things into a black hole, you would expect that the amount of information that the black hole can hold is proportional to its volume. But that is not what modern black hole physics says. What it says is the amount of information is proportional to the area of the horizon. As if the black hole horizon was made out of pixels, little elementary pixels, plus, minus, plus, minus, zero, one, or whatever, and that the number of them is no more than the surface area. That sounds so, so counterintuitive. That sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. You would think you could fill the black hole up with information, its volume, and now you find that the maximum that you can put into that black hole is what's on the surface area. That theme has gone forward and gone ahead into a bigger picture that the maximum amount of information that a universe can hold is proportional not to the volume of space, but to the surface area of the boundary. Mm -hmm. And that has led to a picture in which everything that takes place inside the universe can be thought of as a kind of hologram, a kind of image of something that's taking place on the boundaries of the universe in the form of a kind of holographic image. Now, we know what a hologram is in our world yep. where we have this three-dimensional illusion, in a sense, exactly. of, of something that is represented as right. dots and dashes on computer code in, in a, or a two-dimensional way. Or on a piece of film. Yeah. On a piece or, of film. Or some right. DVD. So it's almost as though, that's right, it's almost as though the universe was really represented as a large film very, very far away with dots and dashes on it and dots and dashes, and that what takes place, the real things, you, me, or are they real yeah. or not... Uh, planets, everything that's taking place on the inside is a holographic illusion of those things taking place on the boundary. This is one of the most counterintuitive things that physics has been dealing with over the last 10 years or so. And, and this is not just a theoretical metaphor. It's not science fiction with equations, <laughs> <laughs> as some wit has put it. No, it has been forced upon us by the logic of black holes. It has been forced upon us uh, by a kind of inevitable mathematical logic that has its roots deeply rooted in the general theory of relativity and in quantum mechanics. Does this cause us to somehow doubt the reality of what we experience? Well, I'll tell you what the way that I think about it. I think about it as that the human brain was constructed for, by Darwinian mechanisms to deal with a world which is a very ordinary world of ordinary parameters. It is simply not built 
uh, for a world of quantum mechanics, for a world of higher dimensions. And so we have to invent mathematics, abstract mathematics, to rewire ourselves to understand a world that our brains were just not constructed for. Uh, and sometimes that mathematics is extremely counterintuitive. Is this worse than quantum mechanics itself? <laughs> Quantum mechanics itself is highly uh, sorry, highly counterintuitive with its uncertainty principle, all that kind of thing. This is one more element in the same direction, leading us away from the kind of concrete mind uh, set, uh, the kind of concrete mind model that we have of the universe that we inherited from rocks. <laughs> Uh, you know, from ordinary experience. The universe just is not like ordinary experience. It's very, very different. And we have to invent abstractions to understand it. And often those abstractions are terribly counterintuitive. This is just another one.